The next step in the process is we've carried the uh, we've created an inventory item, uh, ultimately sent a purchase order into the system and received it uh, in so that we could enter an order and carried that order down through the uh, the financial cycle for the accounts receivable of the customer uh, who placed the order. Uh, on the flip side, we want to go into the financials. Uh, and for the purchase order that we put out, we ultimately receive an invoice from the uh, vendor and we want to uh, do an invoice uh, for that particular uh, inventory item that we brought in. So invoice entry is uh, in our system AP1100 comes in and uh, the system is asking me for the invoice type. What this allows me to do is I could key in the invoice whatever and do all my own distribution but Dynamic 3i does uh, three-way matching so it allows me to um, match the purchase order that was put into uh, into the system on Dynamic 3i purchasing module. So if I put the invoice type as purchase order it will ask me and mandate me that I must enter a purchase order number to match. Um, so I will call up a list of all my valid purchase orders that are out there to match. The very last one was the one that we entered in, in the previous flow um, to get that inventory item in there and it will automatically default to the vendor that is on that purchase order and bring over certain information uh, and populate it into the invoice entry for me. So um, it will default to the ATI vendor, uh, default my branch, and it will ask me for um, show me the vendor information that it's actually going uh, being entered against. And it will ask me for their invoice number, so on the piece of paper or email that I got, I will enter their invoice number and uh, the system will default to the branch location where this uh, invoice is being paid from and the invoice date will default to the system date and I can actually um, put the bank and the terms etc that it's going to be done again certain default informations are all set up so it's going to be paid from uh, from bank number one associated with the branch and at this point in time it will actually um, go off and I can actually start keying in the distribution um, but ultimately um, sorry, uh, we got to enter the invoice amount. So the invoice for this was um, uh, seven, actually five hundred and thirty-five dollars, I believe. So we'll key that amount in, and it will tell us when we actually go to the matching information here. Because once we have that invoice amount, we want to call up the uh, the what the, what the purchase order went out to. So if I call up that matching screen, uh, the invoice number will display there, the purchase order number 8158, uh, the product will display and because it was a purchase order it will automatically go out and pull in all the receipts uh, against that PO for that particular item. So we had receipt 503 with a received quantity of five of 100 at a cost of 535 extension five hundred and thirty five dollars and at this point this allows me now to match off what the invoice is and what it, what is occurring so if the invoice was to be say for a quantity of uh, was fifty um, by entering in that amount there I have a variance of fifty uh, if the invoice amount was for the true quantity which which we will key in as one hundred but for whatever reason my invoice extension here uh, the extension on the purchase order side here was 535. Let's say that this invoice amount here was for $600. Um, then what happens is I get an amount variance of $65. And the system will, uh, in the next steps that we do down here, would create the distribution required in order to match off that variance. Right off the bat, because this is a purchase order, uh, take special note that the invoice as a whole is in suspense. So it will automatically go on suspense until such time that this matching screen is balanced and bat matches this invoice amount. So once this does its matching here, any variances that it produces here will be tracked and logged on an individual receipt basis. When I pull this into my distribution, which is the next step that I'll, that I'll show you in a second, um, it will build it all and it will try to match it off to this invoice amount here. If these two values don't total up, this will continue to be on suspense until such time that um, you know the receipts are looked into, the vendor invoice is looked into, somebody comes in and does the distribution and accepts the variance and actually it will as soon as the dollar value is equal it will take it off suspense or they can actually go in and take, try to take it off suspense and do the balance uh, itself. So the system will actually um, do all this type of matching and track it for you, but you don't have to worry about the invoice going through to the next step because it will be on suspense if there's a variance. So we're going to match this one very simple for the full, full amount to see the distribution that's built. So no variance, no amount, no quantity, full quantity and full extension. 
and what happens to the system when it matches it is it um, based on the definitions of that item it will do the distribution down here uh, according to the taxations and everything like that and any variances so it's just going to hit my uh, corporate accrued liabilities based on how the system was set up for the full dollar value as soon as these two values match as, as you recall that I was talking about you'll notice that the status has now gone to an entrance status so this invoice is ready to be committed and saved to the database we'll save it off to the invoice uh, to the database and it's it's uh, ready to ready to go so as far as uh, check processing is concerned um, the cash requirements or check print that will actually print off uh, we can do a, a cash requirements run to the a to that vendor it's on the AP side so let's take a look at the cash requirements for ATI and we have an invoice um, Actually, before doing the uh, cash requirements for that, let's do a. Um, uh, we got to get the in, when that invoice is actually due. So uh, in the invoice entry, I'm just going to call that invoice back up again for, that we entered. And it was for 535. And we see that based on the terms, that 30 days. So this invoice is due on January 11th. So when we come out of here and go to the cash requirements, I don't need that cash due for until the 12th. So as of the 12th, oh sorry, I just as of the uh, 11th of January 09, and ATI, we'll see that our invoice will pop up on that date and I need 535 done for this. I can actually put it on hold, um, calculate uh, a discount date, put in a discount amount, etc. This is the cash requirements for, for the, that I need for that date. So um, what we'll do is once we um, commit that, uh, I can do this online here. Uh, it's, it's gone to the next stage. Or I can do a cash requirements uh, manual here, cash requirements report.